We're going to show now how iTeam can be also used to manage applications that do not have an adapter automatically. We have shown this with manual services, but the, the user needs to actually upload the file, the file manually. We're going to see how you can automate all that. Why is that useful? Well, there are many uh, cases where the user or the customer may have an, uh, a system or a group of applications that does not have an adapter and does not justify the, the effort on building an adapter for those. And let's say that the status of that application is reflected in a CSV file that is a faithful representation of the status of that application. And let's say that this CSV file is either automatically updated by some processes or somebody goes and manually uh, keeps those up to date. But you need to produce reports and you need to do all the compliance requirements about, uh, around those applications as well. Uh, what do I mean by, 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 by that? Well, let me show you an example. I have a CSV file that represents a very simple case uh, users on a, on a particular uh, application and the username is bcash and name is Barbara Cash and this is the employee number and there's room for as many attributes really as you want and we have Goldman, Judy Hill, uh, Chuck Regal, Dan Mayer, uh, uh, John Rivers, you know we have all these uh, fellows in there uh, and that's a that's my my window into the application but how do I create all the reports, all the recertification, all the reconciliation, all the nice things that iTeam does without having to build an adapter for those. Well, that's what we're going to be uh, showing right now. So, what we did is that we have this file in here. It's a, it's a jar file that uh, was created to deal with CSV files as if they were adapters. Very simple. So, I, again, we go into the mantra of no coding here. So, uh, what we did with that file, the jar file, is actually we went here into configure system, manage service types, and we imported that file and that's what gave us this entry CSB file writer service pretty good so with that done we went uh, up here into manage services and we created a service actually we did this uh, before the presentation called CSB service automator what are the things that we specify in there well we specify uh, the, the adapter that we use uh, where the where in where the file is, so so the adapter automatically goes and read and write because we'll see that it's bidirectional. Uh, the delimiter that you are using to look in the CSV file, sub delimiter because you may have like for example one, one field. Uh, let's say that you have multiple attributes, so you can separate those with, for example, putting a semicolon here. So it's very flexible, and you know how many delimiters do you have? You can have as many as you want. Uh, you can specify where the character says is UTF uh, eight or whatever. Uh, and who's the owner and actually you can even test the connection and as long as the file exists that we showed that it existed there yeah the, the connection is established so it, it can talk to the file so that's that to me that's my adapter very good so if we go to that service that we just created it shouldn't have anybody in there so where is that service is right here so we look into accounts and we should not have anybody because it's a brand new adapter I suspected that's good but because it is a full-blown like adapter it, is, it behaves like one uh, I can actually go in here and I have in the twisty the option to do reconciliation so when I reconcile that file that uh, on, on that on that adapter really that is the representation is a file and we look at the status of reconciliation it should be go quickly because it's very short yep 922 correct uh, so that is done so if we go back to that account now and uh, to that uh, uh, adapter and look for the accounts now we should see all those people that we saw in the CSV file and here they are you know okay now what about the recertification which we want to do to be compliant with the regulations okay well we we can create a recertification policy so we go manage recertification policies and remember that we only have one from previous videos on, on the monthly uh, VPN recertification Well, we can create another one very easily no coding so we click here create and uh, let's say that we give a name uh, CSV app one and because you can have as many uh, app two whatever you can have as many applications as, 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 as you may want to have you click next and you want to recertify account you can also do for accesses or user but in this case it's just account we click next uh, 
and we say, well, what's the target? How are you going to link that this certification policy with the services with the service that we just uh, created before well you click here and actually you select that service and how you do the mapping between or the connection between those two we you click next and says the schedule well when do you want to run this i want to run this daily and i want to run it automatically at nine uh let's say it, uh, let's put 9.25 just to make sure that we have plenty of time p.m. we click OK and then on the policy which is the next step we specify that it's going to be the manager the one that ap approved the recertification or denies it it's a simple policy it's a simple uh, workflow and the account is suspended when it's rejected no emails you can actually send an email to uh, when you reject it 10 days for the stuff to be overdue, when the stuff is overdue, you actually want to reject it as well. And we're not going to mess around with the recertifications uh, or rejections email. You can actually change the format in here if you want to. So that is uh, actually uh, done. So uh, we, uh, we can close this in here. And actually when the when the time uh, passes, we're going to see that that recertification and actually the reconciliation you can actually schedule those as well uh, happens automatically. So it's good because now if you have somebody that gets added or deleted into the spreadsheet, well, the reconciliation will pick that up. If you get somebody that it gets uh, rejected, we're going to see how not only we can read from the file, but actually we can write back into the file and say, well, that person should be deleted. You can notify the person or the system that maintains that file that an action uh, needs to be uh, taken. So we can log off from the console for now. We're going to go back to this console to show how you produce the nice reports uh, that will uh, show to the to the regulators that you are uh, recertifying your users. And when the recertification runs, we're going to see, uh, we, we do that for 925, so it should be around to run. So we we uh, we see that, for example, Barbara Cash, whose manager is Bill Goldman, is going to receive an email indicating that he needs to recertify some people. And Judy Hill, which is here, Judy, she's going to get uh, Chuck Riegel is going to get an email uh, as indicating that uh, he needs to recertify uh, Judy. Okay, so uh, those emails apparently already went out there. So let's go into the uh, mail system and look for Chuck Riegel and see if he got a new email. And sure thing, he did. He said, you need to recertify Judy Hill. Pretty good. And what about Mr. Goldman? Bill Goldman looks at his in basket and he got a similar email saying he needs to recertify Barbara Cash. Pretty good. So all they need to do is actually go to the good looking interface that they use for everything for uh, user provisioning and accesses and all that good stuff and he logins at uh, B. Goldman and he sees uh, recertification approval he was expecting that and he said Barbara Cash yes I want to approve that uh, because I like her And he, you know, puts that in capital if he wants to. And she's recertified. Now, when was the other guy? Was uh, Chuck Riegel logs in? He's going to get a similar attention needed. Actually, he had a, a one that is overdue that he didn't took care of. But this is the one that just happened, and he's going to say that he's going to reject that. He's going to say, "Well, because I do not." like uh, who's this Judy Judy and he clicks OK well now we're gonna see uh, actually uh, what is it that has happened as a consequence of having done that but uh, we're gonna and the, the important thing is that you're gonna get your reports that you can send to your uh, you can give to the uh, auditors for that but it's actually if we take a look at the at the CSV file because we made it bi bi bi-directional and this is actually something optional notice that huh, all this was left the same but 
in here we're saying you need to suspend duty hill that's an instruction that you and this is a way that you know we chose in here you can make this differently uh, to, to, to communicate bidirectional through that uh, CSB file so what is left now to show is uh, those nice reports so let's go back to the console and uh, you can log in actually you, you can log in as a as just a, as somebody like an auditor and he will only he will not have all the things that the IT manager has but he will have just the report section but in here I'm logging just from the console and we have all the reports actually you can make this granular and then the guy can go here and say well I want to run a user and accounts report and I want to run the recertification change history report on which service I don't want in all the services I want to make it specific to the one that we've been dealing with which is actually this one the CSB service automation you select that one and uh, you click OK and that should be all we need to actually do and uh, a report should be generated for us and sure enough let's make this bigger so we can see it and we see that Barbara Cash was approved because I like her and, <laughs> and Judy Hill was uh, rejected because he that guy uh, Chuck Regal didn't like uh, Judy so you see how you can actually treat those uh, applications without having to create necessarily an adapter for it if you have an ICSB that reflects uh, the actual situation of those uh, applications